There is no sugarcoating or spinning away from it. 2021 was an unmitigated disaster for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We all know that. The hiring of Urban Meyer, that was a disaster on so many different levels. And then the fact that you tied your face of the franchise and Trevor Lawrence and his future initially to Urban Meyer, not a good look and certainly not a good result. You know, and as a general rule, if the head coach you just hired and gave a shit ton of money to and he's supposed to be a high profile hire, doesn't even make it through the first season, you got some issues, you got some problems. So the Jaguars had to go into this off, past off season and perform a major course correction. And to their credit, to their credit, they absolutely did. They made a course correction in some respects. First thing they did was they apparently made a philosophical decision that they were going to go big to help out their young quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, which is exactly what the hell they should have been doing. That's the game that they're in. You have to support and help and aid Trevor Lawrence at all costs. Because if he can be that dude, the entire trajectory of that organization changes dramatically. So first thing they did was they went out and hired a new head coach, and that's Doug Peterson. And speaking from a Bears fan perspective, I didn't understand why the Bears weren't more interested in him or other teams weren't more interested in him. And, you know, there were certainly some criticisms of Peterson that were valid. However, this is also a guy that has been a Super Bowl winning head coach. Like, you can't take that away from him. He won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles being the starter in the Super Bowl. You can make whatever excuses you want for that. That doesn't change that reality. That's absolutely what he was. He is a Super Bowl winning head coach, and those guys don't come around all the damn time. So when you talk about knowledge, you talk about experience, and you talk about resume and credentials, you know, Petersons were as good as anybody that was available this last head coaching cycle. So the Jaguars did really, really well there, even though he apparently wasn't their top choice, and it was Byron Leftwich that was. And frankly, while I understood at the moment why Brian, Byron Leftwich maybe didn't want this job, shame on him for not taking it. Doug Peterson didn't care. He took it. Good for him. And then they went into free agency on the offensive side of the ball, and they spent some big money on guys like Brandon Scherf and Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk. You know, just like they went heavy on the defensive side and spent big on Oluwakuna Fadakasi. You know, and it, it was certainly criticized at the time, just the sheer amount of money they were spending, and I criticized it. And I still question, like, how smart that was in the long term, because you're talking about a team that didn't win the Super Bowl that now is over the salary cap a year later. But in the moment, it is understandable. This is a team that said, we've got to do more to help out Trevor Lawrence. And while it's a bit of a history repeats itself type of situation with the Jaguars doing poorly in the draft over the years, then having to overcompensate by spending a ton of money in free agency, it worked out a little better this time. It certainly didn't start off that way, though. This team did not get off to a great start. They were 2-6, and six, and then 3-7. and seven. And even with five games to go in the season, they were only 4-8. and eight. So while, sure, the AFC South was trash, and you're looking at a team that had an outside chance, it was a very, very, very outside chance. They basically were going to have to win out to have any realistic shot at the playoffs, the division crown, anything like that. But son of a bitch, this team started to find its rhythm, and they did exactly that. They won their last five games of the regular season, including beating the Tennessee Titans twice. You know, every year we do this. Every year we're looking for a team that goes from worst to first. Every year. There can be a lot of different factors that play into that. But most years it feels like you have a team that goes from worst to first. And the Jaguars went from the number one overall pick to winning a division a year later. And a team that you look at right now and you say, Trayvon Walker only had three and a half sacks as a rookie, so statistically wasn't impressive, but you see the flashes, you see the upside, you just need to see more. You know, Devin Lloyd's there. Now you built in them in alongside with a Josh Allen, let's say. And you've got some nice young pieces to build around on that defense. And then obviously you've got Trevor Lawrence. So you've got that foundational building block on offense this is a Jaguars team that is potentially well-positioned in the future, although you questioned a little bit, like, why the hell are you over the salary cap? But nonetheless, they ultimately won the AFC South, and they went 9-8. and eight. So if you're looking at year two of the Trevor Lawrence experience, year one with Doug Peterson at the helm, you're giving it a very high grade. 
You absolutely have to, considering they were a last place team with not just last place team, but the number one overall pick, indicative of being the worst team in the league last year, to now they're winning their damn division. And this team showed a lot of guts, especially in that wild card round game against the Chargers. I mean, it looked bad really early. They were down 27 to nothing. And Trevor Lawrence looked like dog shit. Four first half interceptions. And he, he looked like he was out of it. The Jaguars looked like they were out of it. But they kept coming. They kept fighting. They kept plugging away at it. Realizing they were playing the Chargers. Who will find a way eventually to screw themselves up. Which is exactly what the Chargers freaking did. So this team that had the worst record in the league last year. And the number one overall pick. Had a turnaround season. Won their division. And won a playoff game. And frankly... Stuck a bit of a game to the Chiefs in the divisional round. It wasn't like it was an easy, easy free pass for the Chiefs to get to the AFC Championship game. So when you look at this Chargers team, or excuse me, this Jaguars team that beat the Chargers in the wild card round, you know, you look at them and you probably start to elevate your expectations for them a little bit in 2023, where you almost maybe take for granted that they're going to be the best team in their division, and you wonder if they start to enter the mix of potential contenders in the AFC. And while I'm not quite there yet, I don't know that they are that far away, but a lot could change one way or another in one offseason, as we know. Even looking at recent Jaguars history, when you talk about that 2017 team that was up double digits in the fourth quarter on the road at the AFC Championship game against the Patriots, and found a way to screw the pooch on that. So, if you're a Jags fan right now, you're a fan of Duval Football! You certainly probably feel really, really good about how this 2022 season went. And even you look at the situation, you say, hey, they don't, they don't have much in the way of cap space. In fact, they're over. They're going to have to do some maneuvering around. You're probably not that concerned about that because you have enough reason to believe now that Trevor Lawrence is the guy. And man, that can be something that helps you gloss over other holes and other problems on your roster. This team's not all the way there yet, but... When you look at the AFC in the future and you say, my God, you've got Mahomes, you've got Burrow, you've got Allen, you've got Herbert, just those four guys alone. When you talk about the quarterback position, you say those teams you would anticipate potentially being in the mix you know, for many years to come. Now you throw in a Trevor Lawrence into the fold. Now it gets even tougher. You get a couple of other guys into the fold and holy shit, that AFC is going to be a freaking dogfight. But for the Jags, Mission accomplished in 2022. You had to do everything you could to ensure that Trevor Lawrence wouldn't be a bust. Because after his rookie season, it wasn't a guarantee, that's for sure. Because he did not look great at all. You now know he's not the bust. You have some good feeling that he could be the guy. And man, the entire trajectory of this organization has changed dramatically. So mission accomplished.